Welcome to the dance of the liminal crone. What a perfect time to celebrate the crone, Halloween. <laughs> liminal comes from the Latin word lumen, meaning threshold, doorway. It represents a time or space of transition between two ways of being, two ways of seeing, where one way is dying or dead, and the new way is yet to be born. Liminal time occurs in nature at twilight, um, dawn, around dawn and dusk. Liminal time is also the present moment because it occurs between the past and the future. Liminal space, on the other hand, is the space on the edge of boundaries between two forms, the boundary that um, is the edge between two properties, for example, often marked by a hedge or a fence, um, the space where, the la where land and water meets, where plains and mountain. Liminal is also the space between two thought forms. It is the stillness between oscillating emotions. It is the silence between two words or sound forms. It is the gap between the in and out breath. In a liminal period, whether it be time, space, or our experiences, in a liminal period, three things happen. First, there's a disintegration. The old form is broken down, disintegrated. Then it is dissolved, purified. And then finally, it is regenerated or renewed. So liminal times are often periods of great transformation. And so liminality is part of an eternal cyclical rhythm of birth, life, death, <clears throat> renewal and rebirth. And every form in existence is engaged in it, in it from stars and galaxies to the smallest of creatures, including ourselves in our physical bodies, in our mental thoughts, in our emotions, breath. And who choreographs this cosmic dance of transformation? Mama Crone, of course, the dark goddess. <laughs> in many lands, she's known by many names. Kali in India, Hecate, Persephone in Greece, Lilith in the Near East, Morgana, Black Madonna, the Slavic Baba Yaga, Santa Merte, and on and on. So the dark goddess represents a formidable feminine force in which all life dies into to then go through a generative process of transformation in mysterious darkness before it's a new form is reborn. The dark goddess is part of a primordial triple goddess cosmology whose energy or shakti, shakti is a Sanskrit word for energy, shakti, it's both representative of the energy and the goddess, because they are one and the same, you know? So the dark goddess is part of a primordial triple goddess cosmology that's seen in all cultures, indigenous cultures, ancient cultures, whose energy represents inertia or darkness. And here darkness means the regeneration principle. She's also known as the Kron archetype. And the other two energies are the energy of luminosity or the creation principle, the creative principle, which is the maiden archetype, and the sustaining principle, dynamism, the mother archetype. So together, these three primordial energies are aspects of the one supreme goddess, para shakti, para absolute energy, supreme energy who is the organizing principle of all universes and who embodies all the forces of life. Now the word crone is related to the word crown or corona, meaning wisdom. 
strange, isn't it? <laughs> I wonder what the coronavirus is here to teach us. <laughs> Anyways, how wisdom, the crone's wisdom, comes from having gone through one crossroads after another for eons, knowing that death is a necessary and a sacred step before new life is born. And so the crone is the regeneratrix, not the creatrix, but the regeneratrix who destroys in order to create. She is the cause of all liminal experiences. She is timeless because she is a devourer of time. She devours the past and the future. She's always in the present, so she's timeless. She is formless because she's an annihilator of all forms. <laughs> and she transcends all dualities, holding the dual aspects of masculine and feminine, yin and yang. In her earthly presence, the dark goddess has many roles. As a wise woman healer or a wise man healer, she is known as the shaman, the druids, <laughs> hegwitch, a Saxon term meaning a hedge rider because she rides the hedge, the boundary <laughs> between this world and the spirit world communicating to the other world, bringing back intuitive wisdom, bringing back healing wisdom, prophecy, and much more to her community. It's unfortunate um, that the word hag has terrible meaning, like when you Google for it. <laughs> but it actually comes from the Greek word hagio, meaning holy. So it's almost every word that is misconstrued or um, you know in common culture is al almost always has a glorious past <laughs> the dark matter that physicists talk about that permeates all of space <laughs> that darkness has always been known to wisdom cultures as the dark cavernous womb of the goddess the womb because in Indian thought her womb, the cosmic womb, is considered an inexhaustible regenerative dimension that permeates all of the manifest universe and births all wisdoms everywhere. And so it's called the Hiranyagarbha, the golden womb. You might ask, how does liminality, the crone, and all this womb talk matter to me? <laughs> is it just stories or? Actually, it does, it does affect us very deeply on many dimensions. We'll explore that in this concert. <laughs> As humans, we share many common liminal experiences during our lifetimes that can be very disori disorienting. Like when we transition from a fetus to a breathing infant, when we enter puberty, when a woman goes through her moon cycles, marriage, pregnancy, childbirth, parenthood, menopause, old age, death, all of these are liminal experiences we share. But some liminal experiences that arrive in our lives unannounced can be periods of great uncertainty, confusion, anxiety, and fear. You know, we've all been there. You know, everything's chugging along fine. There's an inherent sense of comfort, continuity, security, and then bam, <laughs> a crisis hits us that ruptures the sense of comfort, leaving us exposed, shaky, wobbly, terrified, profoundly mystified. We feel exposed because we have nowhere to hide. We've run out of options for escape. We're shaky, wobbly because it feels groundless, right? We have nowhere to land. And a rush of fear grips us because what we knew to be true about ourselves, our lives, is no longer there for us to hold on to. So fear and form are so very intricately connected. We feel mystified because we sense something is changing in us. There's a birthing process occurring. There's something gestating in us, but we really can't put our finger on it. Our mind, our rational mind, our linear thinking process can't comprehend it. I just want to say that 
Feeling fear is such an intrinsic part of being alive in form in this universe. Everything that is alive feels it, especially when there's a threat to our physical, emotional, psychological well-being. It is a natural reaction against the possibility of loneliness, nothing to lean on to, nobody to lean on to, and death. It could be death of an identity, death of a relationship, death of a belief, death of a loved one, even an impending death of our own selves. St. John of the Cross refers to this as the dark, dark night of the soul. When we remember that the crown as the regeneratrix initiates change in order to dismantle all that is no longer serving us in our relationships, our life structures, societal structures even, even we begin to connect very deeply to the transformative energy of the dark goddess within us and without, and there's nothing to be afraid of. It's the most magical time of our life when we simply know how to be in that energy. And in the midst of the discomfort and pain, when we begin to witness who we already are, not who we ought to be, not who we were, who we already are, when we summon the strength to be open and receptive to the present moment, surrendering and softening to what is unfolding without striving, without trying to fix something. When we cultivate patience while something powerful gestates in us, we acknowledge and invite her powers in ourselves. When we place our complete faith in her, Kali, the crown, we begin to see ourselves in her dark womb moving through the great patterns of cyclical renewal. Her wisdom, our inner compass, her love and compassion, our way to freedom. We start a performance with an invocation to Ganesha, who is a remover of all obstacles, and his siblings, who are not very well known, but <laughs> still assist him <laughs> in removing obstacles.
கந்தனுக்கு சரோகரா முருகனுக்கு சரோகரா கந்தனுக்கு சரோகரா முருகனுக்கு சரோகரா கந்தனுக்கு சரோகரா முருகனுக்கு சரோகரா கந்தனுக்கு சரோகரா முருகனுக்கு சரோகரா தேலனுக்கு சரோகரா குமரனுக்கு சரோகரா தேலனுக்கு சரோகரா குமரனுக்கு சரோகரா தேலனுக்கு சரோகரா குமரனுக்கு Bye.